Hi everyone, welcome to Biology Professor. Let's start today by asking a question. Why should we care about bacterial growth preferences? I think the best answer to that question is that by understanding the preferences that bacteria have in order to be able to grow, we can also learn how to keep them from growing and how to prevent the growth of, of bacteria that we don't want to grow, like the bacteria that will spoil food and cause food poisoning or other human pathogens. Now, that's why today we're talking about bacteria temperature preferences. Bacteria can be classified into five main groups based on what temperatures they grow at. I've got a graph here. Let's talk first about what's on the y-axis. Here we have the rate of bacterial growth. This means that bacteria have a minimum temperature at which they will grow, and then as you enter into their optimal range, their rate of growth, rate of growth increases. And then as you start to reach the maximal end of their temperature range, that rate of growth will decrease. On the x-axis, we have temperature. I put it here in terms of degrees Celsius. This is because both in science and research applications, and also in most of the world, including Europe, temperature is usually expressed in terms of degrees Celsius. I know as Americans we're used to thinking about temperature in Fahrenheit, so let me help orient you by saying that zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water freezes, 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water boils, and 25 degrees Celsius is approximately room temperature. So now let's start talking about those five classes of bacteria. The bacteria that grow in the coldest conditions are called cyprobiles. These are bacteria that can grow in freezing conditions. Their optimal temperature is between 0 and 10 or even 0 and 15 degrees Celsius. Um, and th these are the bacteria that grow in polar regions and in deep ocean water, so the water that is very, very cold. Next, we have cyprotrophs. Cyprotrophs are bacteria that grow typically in this 10 to 20 degree Celsius range. Uh, they can also grow at this range that's a little bit below 10 degrees Celsius, which is typically refrigeration temperature. So if you've ever had food that you put into the refrigerator and it's spoiled, the bacteria responsible for that is some type of cyprotroph. Next, as we get into these warmer temperatures, we have mesophiles. Mesophiles grow best in the range from 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. These are bacteria where, for example, if you have some food and you leave it sitting out for several hours, and then you get sick from food poisoning because the food spoiled because you forgot to put it into the refrigerator, those types of bacteria are mesophiles. Also, human body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius. is about where this dashed line is. So all human pathogens are also mesophiles. Then we have thermophiles. These are bacteria that prefer warmer temperatures. So we're getting up into this 50 to 60 degrees Celsius being their optimal growth range. And then finally, on the warmest end of the temperature spectrum, we have hyperthermophiles. These are bacteria that can grow even in temperatures around the boiling temperature of water. They all typically grow above 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. These are the bacteria that are growing in hot springs and also in very deep ocean vents. 
So in oceans, you have the very, very cold water where, for example, the microbiales are living. You also could have these deep ocean vents that are basically the openings of underwater volcanoes. This is very, very hot. So you can imagine just how hot volcanoes and magma are. So hyperthermophiles are the bacteria that are living in those conditions. So I want to wrap this up by saying that temperature is obviously a very big consideration when you're thinking about what different types of bacteria need to grow, but it's not the only consideration by any means. Bacteria also have different requirements, for example, for pH. There are many bacteria that prefer to grow at a neutral pH, while some prefer acidic or basic conditions. There are also various nutritional requirements. So for example, some bacteria absolutely require oxygen in order to be able to survive. Now, on the other hand, oxygen can be toxic to many other kinds of bacteria. And then there's a whole host of other nutritional requirements. Different bacteria will require different levels of nitrogen or sulfur or carbon dioxide or different trace metals. And these are all things that have to be taken into account when you're studying the ways that different types of bacteria grow. So. That's it for today. I hope you guys learned a lot, and thanks for watching.